Hi, this is Chris at OPT. This is a video showing how to stack and process images using just Photoshop. Now I'm gonna show you how to do this. It's not the simplest way of doing processing, but if all you have is Photoshop, it will allow you to stack and process files without having to jump to another program. Now the one caveat here is that all of the files that you're stacking already need to be a Photoshop friendly format such as TIFF. If you've seen my recent video on how to process wide field astrophotos, I go through the process of using Photoshop's RAW converter to take the RAW files and convert them into TIFF files. So please check out that video if you have not seen that already. So in this case, I have the folder of files already saved right here under the TIFF file folder. And I wanna select all of them and load them into Photoshop as separate files. Now once you get all the files loaded, you'll notice that they are all listed separately. You can click on each window to see each individual file. If you want to see the entire list, you click on the indicator right here and it allows you to choose the very first file, which will be the base layer in your stack. As you can tell, each file here has moved slightly and some of them have satellite tracks or even meteors that pass through. This is one thing that can be dealt with somewhat in Photoshop, but to a much lesser degree than using other stacking software. Choosing the very first image in the stack as the base layer, you essentially have to copy and paste the next layer on top. So I've selected the next image here. I now go over here and paste it on top. And if you look over here, you can see the second layer added. Now we need to zoom in to actually look at the stars. As you can see, the tracking was not ideal in this frame, but it was about the same as the frame before. So even if you don't have perfect tracking, you can still use this method to stack images. If you select blending mode here, which is listed at normal, and you set it to lighten, you will actually see the lighter pixels from the other frame showing here. If you grab it and drag it around, you can actually see the stars show through from both frames. So what we're trying to do is to get both frames to line up the stars as much as possible. If you can't get a really good alignment, one of the things you want to check under the view menu is to see if snap is turned on. If you turn that off, then it gives you more control over aligning the stars. Once you get the stars aligned, you want to change the blending mode back to normal and adjust the opacity of the top layer to 50%. You've effectively averaged the values of both frames. So if I blink the image on and off, you can see the difference in the noise content as you've taken half the image from the top frame and half the information in the image from the bottom frame. At this point, you're effectively repeating the process. You go to the third frame in the list, select the entire image, copy it, go back to our base layer frame here, make sure that you're clicked on the topmost layer, and hit edit, paste. Now you'll see that because the tracking changed, the stars have changed their appearance somewhat. We follow the same procedure, hit the lighten mode, do your best to align the stars as accurately as possible. If the stars are not perfectly round, this may be a little difficult, but just be patient. Now, change blend mode back to normal, but instead of going to 50%, drop the opacity to 33%. There's a logic to this. The percentage of the opacity of the layer should be as close as possible to one over the layer number. So the third layer becomes one third, the second layer is one half, the fourth layer will be 25% because it's one quarter. You want each successive layer to add just a smaller and smaller percentage from the new frame to get as close as possible to an average value across all the frames. So when you adjust the opacity on the third layer, Instead of going to 50% like we did on the second, we go down to 33%. The reason for this is you want to add a smaller and smaller percentage of each successive frame to the average. 
When you have two frames, the top one is 50% because you want half the information from the bottom frame and half the information from the second frame. When you add a third frame, that should only be one third of the information in the image. So because it's one over three, you set the opacity to 33%. You can only choose whole percentage numbers, so it's not a perfect average. Following this procedure again, we take the fourth layer and paste it, change to lighten, adjust to line up the stars as close as possible, move back to normal, and you guessed it, drop to 25%, which is the fourth layer, so the opacity is one over four. Now you'll notice just after stacking four frames, there's already a big improvement in the shape of the star as well as the noise in the image. This is what it looked like on the first frame, second, third, fourth. Because the noise in the image is random, as were many of the tracking errors, the more frames we combine, the better the image looks. However, if you have issues such as aircraft streaking through or meteors, they will still show up in the image. As you stack more and more frames, they will get fainter and fainter, but because Photoshop only has an option for doing a straight average, you don't have the ability to selectively target and remove these until later. Now I'm gonna stack all of the rest of the images using the same method shown here. We're gonna speed things up so you can see me go through the process, but honestly, I'm doing the exact same thing on every frame, just adjusting the opacity to be one over the layer number. So as you can see here, I've just stacked 10 frames, which honestly is about the most I have the patience for with this method. If you have more frames than that, I would recommend you actually stack them in groups of 10, flatten the image, and then stack those master images together using this method. Because believe me, trying to stack 30 frames and remember what percentage you're at can get very difficult. So just going through the list, we start with the background layer at 100%, second layer at 50, third layer at 33, 25, 20, 17, 14, 12, 11, and 10. So each layer is as close as possible to using round numbers not going down to decimals, one over the layer number. So the 10th layer should contribute one tenth of the information to the stack. The ninth layer contributes one ninth and so on. And doing this gets you as close as possible to an actual average stack. And as you can see, there is a drastic difference between what I started with here on my first layer and just look at how adding each layer in turn corrects the star shape as well as correcting the noise. Now, I'm not gonna claim that this image is perfect. As you can see, there is still some drift in the stars. But when I back out to look at the whole image, it actually looks quite good compared to what I started with. At this point, we're going through a very similar process detailed before. I'm not going to go through the entire process. To see that, you can look at part three of my wide field image processing. But taking this image, you want to flatten it, which takes it down to one layer again. And just showing you a little bit of what this can do, going to adjustments and levels, you can set the black point separately for each channel. Make sure to not clip the black point. And if you just apply a simple curve to this, you can now see quite a bit of information and contrast with far, far less noise than you started with. So there it is. This is how to do simple stacking in Photoshop. The method is simple. The process may be a bit monotonous, but if all you want to use for your processing is Photoshop, this gives you a way to do stacking and you can follow up with the processing in part three of my wide field processing in Photoshop. Once again, this is Chris at OPT and from all of us here, keep looking up.